All right, we are live. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the Journey Within. This is a journey of deconstruction and reconstruction of a death and rebirth. And today, I'm really excited and honored to be interviewing um, a former mentor of mine. Um, this is Ruz Yavari, who's an embodiment coach with Boundless Embodiment. And so I'm very excited. So, hey, Ruz, thank you so much for coming on. For sure, man. Thanks for having me, man. Awesome. Well, um, why don't we start out just by, uh, if you can introduce yourself and uh, yeah, just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. For sure, man. Uh, so my name is Ruse. I uh, am an embodiment coach. I started getting into uh, personal development probably about four years ago or so. I had a breakup with uh, a woman that I was planning to meet you know, Mary, she was, she was, uh, my fiance at the time. And I, I realized that uh, I was lying to myself and I, I wasn't able to go through with the, the wedding. So I actually ended the engagement. And what that led to was a, a kind of a halt in my life. I actually had just gotten laid off from a job that I was at for, for several years. And it gave me an opportunity to stop and reflect, like, why am I the way I am? Like, why did I do that? Why did I, get engaged to a woman that I knew in my heart I didn't want, but like I wasn't able to trust myself and just let go. And uh, it uh, got me off on this journey of self-discovery, of going out and experiencing uh, all my emotions, learning how about, you know, how to show up in life more like present and more aligned. Uh, and it actually got me on a journey of like going out and meeting women again from a place of authenticity. Cause I, I spent most of my life, feeling deathly afraid of women, like, especially the ones that I found most attractive. I, I just felt like an energy would come out of me that I just didn't want to look at this shame, this anxiety, that was just such an intense feeling. And uh, it was just really hard to be in, in that energy and around women that I liked at the same time. So it, it actually pushed me to like, go and face a lot of that, that pain um, over the course of the following couple of years. And it, it also led me to um, discover embodiment, discover uh, releasing and surrender, and actually see some massive changes in my life, not just with women, but in every area of my life uh, dramatically. And uh, so as I started to, as you mentioned, deconstruct and peel back my own layers, more of me, as you can call it, started to come out and uh, I started to feel more connected to life, connected to God, connected to a sense of purpose. So I started a coaching practice first as uh, the real masculine dating coach um, back in 2019. And then more recently, I uh, got into embodiment coaching when I realized like, I think helping someone shift their way of being already includes dating, includes money, includes relationships, includes health. I wanted to do something more holistic. So I, I got more into the embodiment coaching. Uh, in the last year or so. So yeah, man, it's been a crazy journey and I expect it to yeah. continue to be crazy. Well, man, it's just interesting that, you know, I feel like for a lot of men, it always starts with the girl. It's like, what is it, you know, what is it about women that, that really makes us self-reflect? You know, it's, it's so crazy. It is, man. It's, um, as I think so much of, uh, so much of our, our pain as men comes from our own relationship to our own feminine energy, like the feeling aspect, the sensual aspect of our lives. And, uh, you know, most men struggle with that. And so being around a woman that makes you feel, especially one you like, uh, it puts you face to face with that reality, that, that, that truth that like, man, I don't, I don't really relate to emotions that well. And at the same time, you see them and you just love the hell out of them. Like you just want them in your life. You want their presence. You want sex. You want, you know, to feel the love that they also offer. So it's it's an interesting dynamic, man. It's it's a it's a very interesting dynamic because I think most guys that I work with and most guys that I've even interviewed as, you know, just on my own podcast, it all started with women being like the main thing, you know? I know. Um, so you said something interesting there that you know, a lot of men can't accept their feminine energy. Um, would you say that is the primary reason why a lot of men struggle with just females in general is because they 
reject their own uh, feminine energy? It's both. It's both rejection of their own feminine and their own masculine. Because I think we look at these two energies as separate, but they're actually like, they're one. They work in unison together. And, uh, you know, having a poor relationship with your feminine energy already means you have a poor relationship with your masculine because one needs the other in order to like blossom. They both need each other, essentially. Like feminine energy is what, when it opens and blossoms, inspires the masculine energy into more love, right? And masculine energy is what gives the presence needed in order for the feminine energy to feel safe enough that it's okay to open up and let go and surrender. So, you know, an unhealthy relationship to both is usually what happens for most men. But I think that what's more evident and obvious is like the pain of the feelings of feminine in their body. Because that's a very, it's a much sharper, it's more sens sensory based. And that that's the one that they, they feel the most. They feel like the most intensity towards. Hmm. So you call yourself an embodiment coach. Um, what, what do you think that means to you? Like someone that's not familiar with that term, what is, what is embodiment? Embodiment is, well, it's a couple of things. One, it's, it's your ability to be literally in your body, like use the full range of your, um, connection to self, being able to feel all aspects of you and let yourself be guided by being grounded and connected to all of you. So I think where most people operate is from the neck up in general. So when they're out operating in life, they're mostly in their heads. So they're, they're accessing a very small part of their ability to connect with the world, to um, feel okay in, within themselves uh, and to, you know, I feel a joy and excitement for life. They're, 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 they're very limited because everything's coming from just up here. When you're embodied, you're accessing a whole range of your uh, capacity to feel, connect, explore, and uh, um, really be able to like sense life at a much deeper level. So uh, embodiment is, is really about your way of being. So, when you look at your way of being is whatever is natural in the moment present for you to how you are. So what I help people with really is shifting their way of being from one that is like really stuck in the head uh, or really fear or resistant or shame based, which is also very limited to one that's a bit more expanded to one that's more present to one that's more open to life because it's in that openness to life uh, that you will feel more well capable. You'll feel more, uh, able to like get what you want in your life you'll feel a lot more ease within yourself and you'll feel it's a lot easier to connect with others too now do you think it's possible to be quote unquote embodied but yet be shame based or fear based or you know grief based totally so you you can be embodied in lower energies but um you know what's above those energies will feel very uh well it'll feel like very odd to them or feel awkward to them to be above that if you're really stuck in a lower energy for most of your life it'll feel out of place to feel happiness or joy or love it might feel nice for a second but it won't feel like home for you per se because you're so used to swimming in the waters of grief apathy or shame so uh you know you look at that with like for example homeless people um a lot of them are stuck in like shame, apathy, and, and just really heavy. Uh, and they've been swimming in that water for so long that it, it's it's very hard to pull yourself out. So you can be embodied in a lower energy, but full embodiment is your ability to be okay in all your range of energy, your, your entire range from like shame up until love and peace, that you're able to like embrace, allow, accept all of it, and just be okay in it, be grounded in it. Okay. Yeah. This would be a good, um, you know, transition to like what, because you hinted at the emotional scale and the range of emotions. And maybe you could explain a little bit about that and how do we, how do we move up this scale? You know, what is this scale? And you know, yeah, we'll just start from there. Sure. So the emotional scale is something that came from David Hawkins. A um, couple of books that you might want to check out if you're watching this power versus force or letting go both really good books that highlight um, the emotional scale of consciousness. Consciousness is essentially um, 
the way I view it is it's like a, it's like a tape recorder of energy that has its own set of like thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that are aligned with that level of energy. So someone that's in the consciousness of say shame um, will experience feelings of shame, very, con- a lot of constriction. They'll act shameful the way they're, they're bees. They don't want to be seen. They want to self-destruct. They hate themselves. Um, Versus someone that's in, like, say, the consciousness of anger. Well, they'll feel anger. They'll feel intensity. They'll want to lash out as behaviors. They'll want to attack. They'll want to hurt. They'll have angry thoughts, thoughts of hurting, thoughts of killing. So, right, the thoughts, feelings, and behaviors will align with the level of consciousness you're in in any given moment. So it's, it's kind of like a tape recorder that has it all built into it. Now, the higher your level of consciousness is, the more access you have to not only that level, but everything below it as well. So when you're in a consciousness of love or consciousness of peace, you actually have access to all the ranges below that, but you can't go above it. You're not, you're not seeing above it yet. Right. So uh, this isn't to say that one is bad and one is good. They're just different kind of just letting you know where you're at, how you're seeing the world in a given moment. I think what's really beautiful about the scale of consciousness and emotion in general is it's essentially information for you. It lets, literally tells you how close to truth and reality you are at any given moment. When you're angry at someone, usually, for example, you're seeing someone as an enemy to you, someone's hurting you, or someone's trying to do something to you or get, you know, you know, hurt you in some way. And Yes, if that were true, then that would make sense that you would feel angry, want to protect yourself, want to defend yourself. It's just letting you know, like, okay, this is how I'm seeing the situation right now. Now, you can act that out, which a lot of people do. They get in fights, they yell, they scream, they blame. Uh, Or if you become aware that, okay, I'm feeling this anger right now, I'm seeing it this way, and you allow yourself to, like, get very present and notice it, that energy can shift you could start to like penetrate through it with your presence and it'll start to naturally blossom and let go. And you'll start to see that same situation a little bit differently. And as you keep doing this, it'll raise your level of consciousness. So how you see it will come closer and closer to the truth. And the closer you get to the truth, the lighter you'll feel as well, right? The more uh, close you are to how it actually is versus how you're wanting to see it, the lighter, the more free it'll feel inside your body as well. You know, I I never actually th- thought of or articulated the way you said where when you're at the higher levels, you also have access to all the lower levels. And I just never like it just never occurred to me. But that's such a beautiful way to put it. Mm-hmm. It's like you're um, I mean, it's almost like a video game, right? It's like you've gotten all the tokens, you've gotten all of the badges. It's it is in a lot of ways. And, and that's actually why people that are um, in a very loving space they can they can hold a lot of space for others because um the fact that they have have already accessed what's beneath it and embraced it and accepted and allowed it uh is when they're with someone that is in that pain that's in their own drama um they they can empathize with them they can hold a space of love for them and they can see them as they are even beyond their drama right so that's that's what i mean They, they have access to be able to touch that without getting lost in it and still be able to connect, help guide someone out of it. And, and, um, and that's also why the opposite is also true. Like if, if you work with a coach that's in their own shit and not able to like see above it in that moment, then the way it's going to feel to you is that they're trying to fix you or they're judging you or that if something feels off, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, uh, so, you know, I think it's important as, for all of us as coaches uh, or guides, anyone that wants to help others is um, the best way you can help is actually, you know, working through your own stuff and um, making a good relationship with, with your own inner, inner reality, because naturally you will become good at helping others. Even if you're not a coach, just like your way of being will naturally help people feel more at ease around you. will give people greater understanding uh, and, and it's nothing you have to do extra, which is the, the cool thing. Like your natural presence will become very magnetic and powerful for other people to like be at ease, be themselves. Mm. Yeah. It's like, you can only bring people to the level that, that you're at generally speaking. 
Yes. And I would even add to like the level you're at in the moment you're helping them because. Oh, good point. As, yeah. as, as, as you're, um, as you're evolving, you'll notice that uh, a lot of the stuff fluctuates, like yeah, your energies will fluctuate. Right. But when you're super present with all of your energies, even though you're in fluctuation, if you're really grounded in your presence and you're looking at it from that place of presence, loving eyes, it doesn't matter what you're feeling. Even if you're in, in drama or you're feeling you're going through a bunch of shit, you can actually still be a ton of value to another person because in that moment, you're still present and grounded in seeing like, okay, there's drama happening within me. There's some happenings of energy. That's okay. I can allow that and I can still be fully here for this human being and, and help guide them. Right. Yeah. So as long yeah. as that's there, you're okay. So that, that uh, leads to the next question is how do we get to that place of, of presence? And what is like, what is like, how would you describe presence? What is presence and how do we get there? Mm. So presence is not something, not somewhere you get. And uh, I would say that like none of the stuff we're doing as coaches when it comes to helping another person is getting them to somewhere they're not already at. It's helping them realize they're already where they're at. They're already where they're supposed to be. And uh, it's helping them remove that, that lens that there's somewhere else that they're supposed to be or some other place that's better than this that's not you know, some grass that's going to be greener elsewhere. It's helping them to remove that, those lenses of like imagination and falsehood so that they can actually see like, oh shit, right here is perfect as it is, right? So presence is really like the part of you that's like the inner awareness, the inner silence. It's like the, the very formless aspect of you. So like if you're watching this and you're like, well, what the hell does all that mean? If I had you just close your eyes for a moment, and just simply notice your natural breath without doing anything extra. Just let your breath come out, come in. Notice the sensations that are there. Your inner presence is not the sensations. It's not the breath. It's the part of you that's still silent and observing all of it happen. It's the inner stillness within you. It's the constant within you. That's your inner presence. It's the part of you that speaks the loudest in its silence. And it's an inner knowingness that rings true to your core when it speaks to you. This is the part of you that I'm speaking to. So it sounds like it's a lot of kind of mindfulness and being the observer. Uh, in a lot of ways, it is. It's, it's actually just the mindfulness is becoming mindful that the presence is existing within you as well. Mm -hmm. It's becoming, becoming aware of itself. Right. So it's, it, it is the mindfulness is a very important part of it. And uh, grounding yourself more into that, that inner silence, that inner presence. Well, naturally brings you into like taking off these lenses of insecurity, these lenses of um, inadequacy, these lenses of shame and hurt. And starts to feel like you're able to look at yourself and at life, even when you're feeling down, from a very different level, from a very different place. I feel a place that feels more like home, that feels safe, that feels like, oh man, this is where I've been looking for this whole time. Yeah. And I know, like, and just to kind of go back to an idea what you were saying, you know, where, you know, our, our energies will fluctuate. And I've, I've had it, you know, the same day. You know, I'm, I'm in, I'm in uh, ag flap, right? Apathy, grief, fear, and, and like everything looks through, you know, through that lens. And I'm like, God, I hate my life or whatever. And then I'll go, I don't know, take a walk outside or do something like have some kind of perspective shift to where I'm encouraged. And it's like, well, technically nothing has changed. My entire situation's the same. Yes. Except I'm just in a different state. Yes. You know, yeah, you know. you're looking at it with with slightly clearer eyes than before, right? You're, you know, and, and you you ask the question like, well, how does one shift through these levels of consciousness? Like, yeah. how do we go from one to the other? Uh, and the the simplest way to describe that the how is that the reason why you experience what you experience 
uh, at the level of consciousness that you are in, like, let's say a lot of how you respond to life was with blame and anger, which is very common, like feeling like a victim, feeling like life's happening to you is because underneath that response, there's like some belief within you that you're going to get something by responding to life this way. And that is what we call as an emotional payoff. So a lot of times with anger and blame, what's the payoff that we get with, with being angry and blaming others? And what's, what's one payoff we get from that, Justin? I mean, you, you get to be right. Yeah. Okay. Well now I get to be right and I can make everyone else wrong. Right. Now it's, it's a cheap little payoff that you get to make yourself right and make everyone else wrong, or you don't have to take responsibility. But the trade-off is that you got to hold on to the bag of anger and blame, which is not a pleasant bag to hold. So that's what happens. We hold on to that bag in hopes that this bag is going to get us some payoff of being right, being valued, being loved. But where do those payoffs usually exist, Justin? I would say in the mind. Right. And in the mind... It, are those payoffs usually like, if I do this, then it'll happen in the f some future date, I'll get some love, I'll be right. Or is it, I'll get it right now. Which one is usually the case for us? I would probably guess it's, it's usually like right now, I'm getting something right now. Right. So we think it's going to happen right now. But when we inquire within, we usually find that the, the anger and blame thinks that if I blame the world, then I get to be right. Then I'll be prove everyone wrong. Then they'll love me. Right. So it's always like a conditional, like if I do this, then this, this, and this will happen. Then I'll get mm. the love that I want. So when we actually inquire, we find like, Oh, the payoff is always in the future. It's never right now. So the beliefs are always, if I respond to life with anger and blame now that I'll later get love. But that's actually not how life works. If you actually look at how life works, what you get right now is what you're always going to get right now, even in the future as well. So if I blame and I get angry, I can't use that to get love somehow. Anger plus blame will never equal love. Anger plus blame equals anger plus blame. So helping you to understand that all the stuff you're holding on to, all the bags of resentment, hurt, insecurity – that there is actually a payoff you think you're going to get by holding on to them is the secret to letting go. When you uncover what the payoff is and you see that, oh shit, this anger and blame is actually not giving me love right now. It's actually just giving me anger and blame from that present place. It becomes actually pretty easy to let it go. You're like, well, well then can I let go of the anger and blame if it's not getting me love right now? Yeah. Well, now that I know it's, it's a lot easier to let it go. But why people have a hard time letting go is that they haven't looked deep enough to, as to why they're even holding on to it. So it's it's not so important you try to let go of the emotions. It's better to let go of the payoffs that you think you're going to get from the emotions. Because once you uncover those, you'll see, oh, shit, there's no reason for me to hold on to this anymore. And you can let go. You can forgive. You can set yourself free. It's a lot easier that way. So it. It sounds like there's always some kind of deeper reason why that particular emotion is going on. Because mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you went through this uh, sequence of if, um, if I have anger and blame, then I get to be right. And then perhaps deep enough, we go deep enough, it's I'll be loved at some future point. I'll be loved. I'll be in control of the situation. I'll prove them wrong. And then they'll have to like love me. Like there's some, something like this, right? Uh, everyone has their own variation of this. And uh, the same thing could be like with an insecurity or fear. Like, okay, if I uh, don't approach that beautiful girl, that fear says, don't approach her, it's not safe. Well, then I'll get safety. I'll be safe. I'll be secure here. But if you look at the fear itself, that fear in the moment isn't able to give you safety. It doesn't know how to do that. It only knows how to give you intense fear. So when you let go of seeking safety from something that doesn't even know how to give it to you, the fear naturally lets go. The fear releases itself. Because now the thing that we thought we were going to get by holding on to it is no longer something we believe in anymore. So we just let it go. We're like, oh, yeah, that's not going to give me that. And then you actually relax into where the safety is within you, the presence. So you're always trading one for the other when you're letting go, when you recognize it's not getting the thing I thought I was going to get me right now. So, so let's say theoretically if we... We understand, hey, there's this payoff, there's this deeper reason, and I'm aware of this payoff that it's mm -hmm. giving me. 
and we still can't let go because mm. I'm sure that that still happens, right? Where sure. we're aware of the payoff, but still want to hold on. Sure. In that case, what I recommend is just giving yourself permission to hold on to it. Okay. Part of you wants to hold on to it. So just be present and let that part hold on for a moment. And then ask yourself, what am I getting? What do I think I'm going to get by holding on? Because then that part also has a payoff too. Well, I think if I hold on, then I'll, I'll have control of the situation and I, I won't get hurt. Okay. Well, in this moment, right now, am I feeling nice and in control of my holding on? Does I feel like I, I, I feel like in control? And you'll see like, actually, no, I feel like I feel powerless right now. Or I feel like, oh, this feels intense. I feel like I have no control. Like, oh, shit. So this is not able to give me the thing I thought I wanted. And then you'll, you'll be able to let go of holding on to it. So it's okay. It's not a matter of force. It's a matter of just like bringing the light and shining upon it the truth. That's it. We're not trying to like goad it or trick it. We're just saying like, hey, here's the truth. And the truth just comes from being present with it. When you're present with something, the truth, the light cannot be hidden. It's literally like bright, brightens it and, and makes it so evident that like you can't ignore it. And it's in that moment where letting go just becomes natural. You're not actually doing anything. In fact, you're doing nothing and letting presence do the work for you. That's what it's mm. actually more like. You're just becoming a willing participant and letting yourself look at it, whatever's bothering you. That's really it. You, you make it sound super easy. It's you simple. Know? It's yeah. simple, but it's not easy. It's not easy because for years, basically your entire life, you have practiced the very opposite way of doing it, of avoiding, of resisting, of judging, of trying to analyze your problems and try to fix it in your head, right? You, you have all these, basically all the ways you've given your power away from your presence into like the mind to do the work for you, where the mind doesn't actually know how to do those things, right? Every part of our system is a tool that helps us with things. The mind is great for analyzing. It's great for imagination. It's great for memory. You know, it has a lot of amazing functions within it that are useful for specific situations in life. Uh, but it's quite useless when it comes to dealing with your emotions. It doesn't know how to process your emotions for you. You have a whole different set of tools within your system that allows that. And it's, it's really about taking your power back by stripping away the, the authority you gave to your mind to do the things that you wanted to do that it doesn't know how and bringing it back into your presence to take over. So this is really the process is, is, is reclaiming your power by acknowledging like, okay, I made a mistake. I gave something, a tool inside me to go build a house, but it doesn't have hammers. It doesn't have nails. All it has is a knife. You can't build a house with a knife. So, okay, that's okay. My bad. I'm going to let go of having that part take care of it. And I'm going to have this part take care of it for me. So it's a process. It takes a bit of practice to retrain yourself and to realign yourself into using the proper tools within you. But it also does not take a long time. It, it, I've seen that people transform in a matter of like a month. I've also seen people take a couple of years before they get it and it clicks, you know. Um, but it, it's completely possible for everyone. It's not unique to just me or you, Justin. Any Every human being has the same built-in intelligence that is capable of transforming your life and helping you shift your way of being and be embodied and have whatever you want in life from a place of joy and, and love and confidence. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting that um, what you're talking about coincides a lot with a particular modality or, or model of psychotherapy I've been looking into, which is internal family systems. And they use, I mean, it's it's almost pretty much the same verbiage. They, instead of saying presence, they say self with a capital mm -hmm. S. Mm -hmm. And and what the, uh, the creator of internal family systems actually kind of drew from was through different spiritual traditions like the the one like the one thread through them there's mm -hmm. self there was presence totally. so it's just interesting that like you guys kind of converged you know on the same thing and i guess a lot of people do right like you kind of come to the truth exactly i mean the way i see it is like every single healing modality 
um, at the end of the day is, is the foundation is presence yourself. It, it's, it's realigning and grounding yourself in what you actually are and being willing to open to that possibility so that you can, well, examine the different aspects of you that are in pain and to like allow them and to uh, let them basically open up and reintegrate within yourself. And at the same time, it's also, you know, when you're more grounded in self, the other aspect that starts to become more evident and aware is these the way your natural energy wants to move, the way your actual like self, where it wants to go, you start to become more like sensitive to like, oh shit, that girl's fuck yes, yeah, so, but I'm really scared. But, like, but she's a fuck, right? You start to get the <laughs> feeling of like, but that's okay, right? Or like, I'm getting this calling to like go into solitude or like um, to like mess message somebody or like say this to this person, right? Like you start to get uh, more connected, more connected to like, your real guide, your real inner voice. And so both these things kind of happen simultaneously. So it's one of those things that you don't have to go and heal every aspect of you or, you know, seek to do so. Um, I say like just getting to a place where you can become very attuned to that, that stronger inner voice of way, the way your energy wants to move and begin just surrendering more blindly to that and trusting as you're doing the healing process is a great place to be because you can still get a lot of things you want in life and you can still make a lot of growth happen in your life just by that. Yeah. It's like, you don't have to, because I mean, we're all healing. We're all at different levels. And it's like, we, if we wait until we're a hundred percent healed to do anything, nothing would ever get done. You know? Right. Exactly. And like, I think the most important part of this whole process is just like, you know, understanding what healing actually is and isn't healing is not a matter of like going from like not good enough to good enough. It's going from like, um, it's going from like, I'm enough as I am, regardless of how I feel. And none of these feelings has to be a barrier for me to like, be able to like be okay in that energy and still take action in that energy. You know, that, that I think is more important than in the understanding of healing, right? It's, it's just because we get so kind of tied into the drama of like the old memories that we have or these like, you know, these romanticized like experiences that we had of like breakups or arguments. And like, you know, the more deeply you start to look at that and see that they're just sets of like images and pictures in our head and feelings in the body, uh, the more you realize like it's just drama not real it has nothing to do with who you are or your value as a person it's just the chaotic side of the feminine you know and the chaotic side of the feminine all it really really wants isn't to like heal per se it's just to be accepted the way it is to be accepted and understood and embraced the way it is and in that it naturally opens into love when it's like oh shit i'm allowed to be ashamed I'm allowed to hate. I'm allowed to want to kill that person. And I want allowed to fuck this person, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. When you give that part permission to feel and think the way it does, not necessarily acting it out in the real world, but like allowing it to feel and think the way it does just the way it is. That itself is a big, big step in helping you. Well, step into more acceptance and love in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, just to like, <laughs> not to add any kind of commentary, but just to summarize what you were saying, you know, like when we come into acceptance, no judgment of all of our different, different parts, that's when they're like, Oh, okay. It's safe. I can, it, it's okay. And then you can actually start to like, uh, I hate to say negotiate, but to actually communicate from that place and they'll communicate with you. And, and that's just a beautiful healing process. Totally, man. I mean, uh, I actually made a, a video on this on my TikTok today, but um, I haven't posted it yet, but it's on uh, curiosity. The more you enter, especially if for those of you that are like, er, you know, earlier or, or more intermediate in like the personal development space, like curiosity is really your best friend, both internally with yourself, but also externally and connecting with others. Because curiosity is what leads to stepping away from the judgment eyes and stepping into like seeking to understand eyes. And that it's that it's that curiosity that that creates an openness and a, a willingness to understand yourself or understand others that leads to uh, 
Well, your inner world opening up, your emotions opening up to you, them feeling safe that it's okay to be themselves and reveal themselves to you. Uh, and this is actually how it works in connecting with others as well. When you're, you know, looking to meet the opposite sex or a new friend or networking or any business situations or with family, I mean, more than anything else, most people just want to be understood and accepted the way they are. And the only way you can really do that is if you take off your lens of judgment and genuinely be curious about knowing who is this person in front of me, right? Or who are these emotions? Like, what are these emotions inside me? Okay, they're hurt. Okay, tell me about your hurt, baby. What's going on? Speak to me. I want to hear your pain, right? When you when you address it that way, then it's like, oh, shit. I, are you serious? Okay. It starts to open up. So bring a lot more curiosity into your, your process, play curiosity, and you'll find that it can become easier and easier. Yeah, it's like it's taking a totally different perspective, the perspective of, of presence, mm -hmm. being curious. So um, I wanted to ask about how your releasing practice has evolved over the years. And I'm sure, you know, in our conversation, it's, you know, hints have, have come up here or there. Um, yeah, like how, how has your releasing evolved over the years? Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, as I've, as I've seen like the core of, of what helps people release is, is really the, the presence being a, a big aspect of it, presence, honesty, and open heart. Um, I've started to include a few more modalities that are mostly focused on getting to the root of the core, like basically the um the payoff mm. that's where i focus most on i found like the fastest way to like help people like transform is to you know, more deeply help them get go to their core go to the core of the pain um you know there's a saying by uh, rumi who's a famous persian poet and uh the saying is um the medicine for your pain is inside the pain yeah and uh, it, it's a very, it's, it's powerful because it works for any modality, whether you're just like complete somatic and feeling through it, um, or you are, um, you know, doing a bit of dialogue, inner family systems, whatever, right? They all help you get to the core. And that's where I'm interested in doing is because transformation happens at your core. It doesn't happen at the surface level. The surface level changes on its own when the core is addressed. So yeah. everything that I teach and I'm focused on with my process has been to um, ignore surface, go to the core as quickly as possible and, and help them release from their core. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great way to put it. And I've, I've seen it, it. It wasn't like super obvious because I guess I've been with you for a, a while. You know, I've watched your coaching and been a part of that coaching. Um, but yeah, like I've, I've seen it like streamlined. It was, it was like hard to articulate, but it was just kind of like quick like boom, yeah. release boom release yes. yeah yeah you you uh i know you i probably noticed that we had like a couple calls together like over the last few months here and there and um yes that, i'm i noticed that as well in you when we did it together and i i'm glad you pointed it out like yes it does streamline it it does make it go more quickly it's it's kind of like ripping off the band-aid uh, <laughs> in a way um instead of going slowly and like analyzing each layer, because it's not necessary to, it's actually not necessary. Mm. It, it, it's the, the quickest way is to, is to look at the core of, of the experience. And in that it, it just makes it, well, a smoother ride, man. It just, it just makes it a smoother ride. Mm. So for, for someone that is maybe just starting out with this and they're very analytical, you know, like, like I was, um, how can they make releasing or this, um, this inquiry process work for them? Mm. If you're someone that's oftentimes in your head, um, just being present with your thoughts and allowing them can oftentimes have an effect in the body or you start to feel lighter in the body as well. So it's okay. You don't have to force yourself into your body, but, um, just starting with allowing your thoughts to pass by like clouds is a great way to start. Um, another way is to also just start with like gentle body scans to just notice, just become the noticer of like what's there. Some places you might feel more intense. Some people, some places more subtle, some places nothing. Can you allow whatever's there to be what it is? Just simple body scans of like, can I allow the nothingness? 
Can I allow the intensity? Can I allow the subtleness? Can I allow the prickling? Just noticing, is there a, an ability to be present with that? Just simply doing that will help you start to open up the sensations in your body, will start to help you go lower within your body, and it'll start to open things up quite a bit as well. Um, and I recommend those two because it starts to just help you get aware and present that there is more sensation down below than you thought. Um, and that helps you start to progress to like the later stages of the stuff that we're talking about, which is, you know, releasing on the core ego wants, releasing on, um, you know, the, the core payoffs where you can start to feel more of it underneath and start to feel more sensitized to life and to what's happening inside you. Yeah. I, I found that, you know, it always kind of comes back down to just basic mindfulness and, and that's how I started was just doing quick two, three minute body scans. And that's where it's at. So um, I wanted to ask an interesting question here. Um, so, you know, we've talked a lot about letting go and how when we're in a particular state of say shame or anger, it's like we're very focused on what's making us angry. Um, and so uh, I'm sure watching are familiar with the phrase, you know, wh whatever you focus on expands or mm -hmm. where, where attention goes, energy flows, so mm -hmm. on and so forth. And but it seems like with uh, releasing and, and David Hawkins and, and a particular school of thought, right, it's about letting go. And when you let go of whatever it is you're feeling, then you go up the scale and you can start to you know, really get the life you want. So how do we like, it almost seems like the, uh, there's like a paradox or a seeming contradiction of mm -hmm. we're focusing on something. There, there's like a school of thought, like, you know, we got to really focus on our goal rather than, no, we just let it go into the universe. How do mm -hmm. we reconcile those two? Mm -hmm. So you're right. There is a paradox and like, uh, I'll do my best to explain it. So what you give attention to from a place of presence opens up and reveals itself to you and lets go. What you give attention to from a place of lacking presence also expands, but that type of expansion just circulates that energy more inside you. So rather than letting it go and releasing it and transmuting it to something higher, it circulates more of it within you when it's lacking the presence. This is what most people are doing is they're unconsciously focusing without the presence there. And so that's why a lot of their stories, the drama, the pain, the suffering, it feels like that's being expanded upon or that's being overly focused on and, and nothing else is seen. So the, because of what the presence does is like this. Imagine all of your suffering is like a drop, a drop of blood in the ocean. The ocean's pretty big. Pretty big damn ocean, right? But let's say all of your suffering is just one drop. Now, if you're really present with yourself and you're allowing yourself to rest in that presence, the suffering will feel like just a little drop. It won't feel so bad. It'll feel like, okay, this is unpleasant, but this is like, okay, this is fine. This is, it's, it's, it's going to pass. I'm okay with it. It's allowed to be here. But when the presence is not there, Imagine you take a microscope and you zoom into the one point in the ocean where that blood is and all your focus, a magnifying glass is just on that one point. Now you have no awareness of this presence that's always there within you. That's keeping you safe. So now it feels like you're in a pool of your own blood of suffering, mm -hmm. right? This is how it feels like when we're lacking the presence within ourselves. And that's why it feels like, you're expanding and, and circulating more suffering because that's what it is. That's what's actually happening when that presence is not, when you're not aware of yourself. Got it. So again, it always comes back to awareness and, and presence. And that's the difference. It's, it is, it's the, it's the type of attention you give something and where it comes from mm. that, that matters. Got it. Beautiful. Um, could you share a little bit about, uh, energetic modeling and, and, uh, how that's maybe like if you can give like an example of of what you know how that's looked like in your life totally um well energetic modeling is something that uh, you're actually doing all the time all of us are doing it all the time but we're doing it unconsciously 
What energetic modeling does is it takes the power of your imagination and the power of emotion. And when you do it consciously, you can focus it on something you want to bring into your life with the intensity of the emotion of what, how that's going to feel to you as if it were here right now. And what happens is, is it generates those emotions when done properly with that thought and it ties them together, binds them together for you. And when you're done with it, you, you're supposed to bring it through your entire body. So it's a full body experience of like you experiencing the imagination of having it, breathing it, seeing it, smelling it, tasting it, hearing it, all of it, but with your entire being as if it were done right now. And if done correctly, this will create a lot of joy, happiness, love, excitement. Um, it's as if you got this goal you wanted your whole life right now and it's done. At the end of it, you let it all go. You let all the emotion go. And what tends to happen is you put yourself or you're imprinting the vibration of someone that has that within you, the beingness of having that thing. So like the first time I did it, I did it on a pair of jean shorts, girls jean shorts. So it was like three and a half years ago. And uh, I, I imagined like the feeling of the jeans on my hands as I was like feeling it through my entire body, pulling it down, taking, putting it back, just like smelling it, everything, right? And I kid you not, a week later, I went to the mall and I was out approaching girls and like practicing expressing myself and a random girl, as I was walking through the parking lot, like waved at me. She was with her cousin and I was like, I got this like signal, like, okay, go talk to her. And I ran up to her and talked to her. She was gorgeous. Like just felt like a strong sexual connection right away. Exchange numbers. Next day we met for a date and it was amazing. Great vibe. Uh, an hour later, we were back in my place. We, uh, you know, spent the night together. And uh, the next morning, as I was waking up, I looked on the ground and I noticed, I was like, those are jean shorts. And I, I picked them up and I was like, oh my God, these are the jean <laughs> shorts that were from the thing. That was like energetic modeling. And I was like, oh my God, I, I, this works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this was the fir my first conscious experience of, of doing it. The thing is, you're always thinking and feeling something. So you're you're constantly creating your reality at any given every, every given moment. What most people don't realize is they're doing it unconsciously. So they're inviting a lot of shit into their lives um, on, on a constant basis. So sometimes it's the things they want, sometimes it's things they don't want. Thing is that it's not um it's not prejudice. Whatever you hold in mind, whether it's something you don't want or something you do want, with the intensity of emotion. Well, you're asking for it basically from the universe. You're putting yourself in the energy of having that. And the universe is like, okay, you're the boss. No prejudice here. And it's going to rearrange stuff in your life for those things to like manifest in whatever creative ways that it does. Um, but when you begin to consciously do this and use it as a vehicle to let go of any resistances you have to the things you want, be it money, coaching career, um, specific um, you know, relationships with women or men, you know, romance, sex, whatever. And I use it for all of these things, by the way. Um, you can start to well become the master creator of your life very consciously. And I've used it for building my coaching business, building a certain income level, many experiences with women. Uh, it's been, you know, insane how, how many things I've used it for and continue to use it for. More recently, I've been doing it on, uh, and I'm only saying this partly to hold myself accountable to it, but like um, to, to have 100,000 TikTok followers. And so oh. like I'm posting three to four times a day and I'm manifesting it and I'm like, I'm embodying it and I'm letting go into the place where I'm like free from the outcome and that I'm okay either way, right? But I know that if I do this, well, one of two things is going to happen. Either it's going to happen for me in a way that's going to surprise me. Or it's not going to happen and it's going to lead me to something greater, which is usually the other thing that happens when energetic modeling doesn't get you exactly what you want. That just means that thing wasn't for you and something greater or more aligned is that you're not quite aware of yet, but it's going to show up in your life. Mm. That's a great little like uh, perspective shift, a mindset shift. And that, I think that's why these uh, law of attraction teachers will say, you know, this or something better, you know, just kind of letting it go. That's the important part is like, in order to like fully like model this correctly is um, you're not letting go to receive. You're letting go in order to um, 
in order for what's meant for you to show up in order for whatever you're supposed to uh, align with to show up. So um, it's more of a trust of this is your part of the co-creation. This doesn't mean you, you stop taking action. It just means that when you let go of the thing, the goal, the, the, the thing you want, you're just trusting that like in the present state, you're going to be presented with certain opportunities that you're not aware of yet that you're not even going to be conscious of a lot of times. And you're just going to take them because they feel aligned and it's something's going to manifest and unfold in a beautiful way that um, you're not sure how it's going to be. It's going to surprise you. Right. But that's your part of the, the co-creation process. The rest of it is the universe moving the mountains and like all the other things that need to happen in order for that. You're never going to see, you're never going to see. That's kind of the beauty of the co-creation process. There's a lot of trust and surrender to it. Yeah. And uh, you just being really attuned to like, when you're getting the the hell yes on taking the aligned action and, and following up, following through, that's your part in it. I like that. Yeah. I like the articulation of it's, it's a co-creative process and there's one part of the universe and then your part and it's one. It is one because you are, you're the universe. You're, mm -hmm. you're doing it together because you're, it's really just one, one universe doing it together. Right. But it feels, I'm saying co-creating because um, you know, we a lot of times see ourselves as separate from all this, right? Like, well, there's me and then there's the universe. They're like, they don't equate like, well, I'm like a cell of the universe. I'm right. I mean, I'm, I'm the universe. If you're a drop of the ocean, uh, a drop of water in the ocean, well, it means you're part of the ocean, which means you're the ocean, right? You're just like a little drop, but it doesn't make you not part of the ocean. So yeah, it is a co-creative process and it's it's a really beautiful way to play. It's a playful way of reminding yourself that like, this is a game. It's all meant for fun. I can bring this stuff into my life. It's inconsequential whether I have it or not. And when I have it, it's beautiful because it reminds me that like, I have this beautiful power. And it also, it's humbling because you're realizing like, it's just another experience and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it, it doesn't have like a super big meaning to me, whether I had it or not. The meaning that I'm looking for is already within me. It's right. a reminder of that all the time. Right. Um, I don't know if you have ever read any of Neville Goddard stuff. Have you heard mm -hmm. of him? Sure. Feeling is okay. a secret, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. His, his number one book. Uh, yeah, I've been getting into him like a ton. And it's basically everything you're saying is, is what he's teaching, that imagination creates reality, that we're the spark of God, like a part of God. And everyone is you pushed out. And it's just based on assumptions. And when we change, there's nothing to change but self. And when we change ourself, then the outside self, the, the mirror, the world changes as well. 100%. So, yeah. It's always an inside job, man. It's always been an inside job. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, man, is there anything that you are like experimenting with these days? Like other than the energetic modeling, I know you mentioned that you might have um, done a, a couple of, other modalities here mm, to be honest uh well yes actually now that you mention it but it's not uh not necessarily something i teach it's something that i'm taking a part of uh recently um and it's uh Sadhguru's yoga programs oh, uh, yeah. so i've been i've been dabbling in that uh for pretty consistently for seven months now since no eight months now wow time flies uh, since March and, uh, they are, they add a level of depth, um, through oh, a variety of things, through the breath, through movement, um, that also help with the releasing process, help with, um, uh, help with your ability to like remind yourself what's real and what's not real. And uh, they've been quite a wonderful experience. I'm sure they've, they're having an, a, uh, an effect on my coaching and they're having an effect on my, my releasing practice as well. Um, but it's it's a little harder to quantify because I've done the releasing for so long. Right. But I can feel like it. it's just my gut tells me there's something there. But I haven't been teaching it because you need to get your own teacher's license for it. And that's a whole new process. And I'm not sure I want to go down that path. I'm not sure that's for me. To, gotcha. Maybe not, at least not right now. Yeah, who knows? You know, I <laughs> I never thought I'd be doing hypnosis, man. Like, I feel like uh, there's a lot of things I said, yeah, I'll never do that. That's not for me. And and then I end up doing it, you know? <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Dude, but, it's, you know. it's, it's, uh, 
it's interesting. I think there's a lot of things I could say uh, that, that fall into that bucket. And uh, I think the beauty of that, the willingness, right? There's a certain willingness um, to try things in life. You'll be surprised how many things you might say I'll never do, but a willingness opens you up to something that was above and beyond what you thought it would be and, and may open the door to aspects of life that you had no idea existed for you or maybe leads you to something much greater in your life that you didn't know was possible for you. So, um, you know, willingness is an important part of the puzzle, uh, both with the inner work uh, and the external life of experience of being willing to experience whatever life throws at you. That's what really makes you connect to your deepest level of strength. Well, with, uh, on that note, um, if someone wants to to work with you, contact you, how can they do that? So uh, you can reach me out um, at uh, ruse at boundlessembodiment.com. That's my email. You can uh, check my website, boundlessembodiment.com, or you can just reach out to me on Facebook, uh, ruse Allen, A-L-L-E-N. And uh, we can uh, schedule a chat. I also have a Facebook group called uh, Boundless Embodiments. And uh, there's a lot of avenues to find me, but those are the best ways. Awesome. And and you have a course that really systematically lays out everything we've talked about and how to do it, um, the Intercall Mastery course. Yes. Is that some... Yeah. So share Intercom, a little bit about that? Yeah, Intercall Mastery is an eight-module course um, that basically takes you from a novice into an expert on how to let go, how to surrender, how to energetically model your life um, and design it the way you want. And it teaches you how to go to the root of your emotions so that you can release from the root, let go of the payoffs that are holding your insecurities there, your limiting beliefs there, so you can really dramatically transform your life. And um, a special shout out to my man, Justin, here, who um, is uh, a part of Intercom Mastery as well. Um, I had him actually do a couple powerful meditations uh with hypnosis included um in the sections of the health and the uh the section of the uh what was it wealth and health right it was uh exercise and eating oh, i guess it's just the health aspect. yeah health section the exercise and eating sections so um i i intentionally wanted to include um justin in it because he's doing some amazing work in the hypnosis space and i felt it would bring another layer of depth into the program that wasn't there before. So I just redid the whole thing and I added my new de deeper layers of understanding the streamlines process to, to uh, what Justin talked about earlier to help people release more effortlessly, but also added some of uh, Justin's materials on the hypnosis side. Uh, so I'm excited about that. And uh, yeah, if, you, if you're interested in that, I can share a link. Um, you can find that on my site. Uh, it's it's boundlessembodiment.com uh, dash ICM. Got it. I will have that link in the description. So, Ruse, thank you so much. This was a fun conversation, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Always great to connect with you, brother. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you later. Peace see out. You. Peace, guys.